Hello everyone, my name is Ask Joshi, and this is my quick and easy build guide for the Squirrel Beastmaster in Last Epoch. This build is only possible with the Herald of the Scurry unique helmet because it converts all of your summoned wolves into squirrels. You can have twice as many squirrels as you can wolves, and they have increased chance to bleed and shred physical resist. It also replaces their wolf howl with a steroid that increases their move speed and melee attack speed for 4 seconds. This build does great against multiple targets and single targets, and these skills, I will point out, are unique to my character, which was a solo self-found character that did end up hitting level 100. I'm going to show you just the most important skills of each of these so that you can make sure that you get them, and then you can fill in the rest of the trees as you wish. So for Summon Wolf, you're going to want to go this direction on the hunt, Howl of Might, on the way to safety in numbers. You can summon wolves up to your maximum number of companions. Very important to be able to get the maximum number of squirrels. The next most important one over here is Legendary Bite because it just makes their hits super, super hard and you have 10 of them, so you want to do it as often as possible. When you're starting out leveling, you can actually go the cold route on the way to pack hunters for a bit more damage. My build in particular, I really like to get into the mix as a sort of barbarian would in other builds, so I play it with a big emphasis on swipe, and I actually have gear right now that gives me plus four to swipe, so you're probably not going to have plus four to swipe. The most important things that you get here for swipe are Aspect of the Panther on the way to Wild Calling. The Spirit Wolves on hit chance allow your 10 squirrels to spam even more attacks and then you finish up with Feline Hunter and Lion Strength just to keep that going all the time. This is the next most important one, Culling. Swipe hits instantly kill enemies that are below 14% when you sink two points into it. So I really like to get in the mix as I mentioned, so I increase the damage and area all the way on this on the way to execute. You can obviously spend points uh, further into you know, Lightning or whatever you want. There's a lot of different ways you can take Warcry. I actually uniquely went all the way to the totemic heart because I liked having the three pulses that give me more chance for berserk fury strikes and also the healing um, that I get from invigorate so you can go a, a bunch of different directions with this this ability right here removes Warcry's ability to stun freeze or fear enemies so if you need that survivability you definitely do not go for the totem and shallow breath I did it because I just like having the berserk uptime fury leap is basically just how you're going to be getting around and there are a couple of good things that you can take with this as well Panther Strike and Ambush Predator are going to be basically the most damage that you can do, and Fury Leap pulls enemies when you land, of course, makes a lot of sense if you're going to be leaping all over the place. Pack Leader is quite important because it allows all of your squirrels to jump with you to whatever target you want them to go to, and sometimes they can get really spread out, so being able to leap and pull them to you is very, very valuable. Finally, Frenzy Totem. Just makes a lot of sense. You're going to want the increased frenzy effect um, from the frenzy totem, which of course is attack and cast speed for all nearby allies. So that includes your companions. And the very, very important thing that you need from this is actually the reset, the furious cry. Summoning frenzy totem refreshes companion ability cooldowns. And you can also go all the way into um, the in increased crit strike chance really the most important one is that reset so every time you drop a frenzy totem it resets the howl aka the squirrel rage that you're going to be spamming for our beastmaster passive points we're going to be focusing a lot on minions of course our 10 squirrels want to be as awesome as possible but we're also going to be looking at strength and survivability for our actual character so just follow that bottom track with eight points and six points makes perfect sense there increased health We've got the more melee damage on low health and less damage taken on low health. And importantly over here, we have the percent of potion healing received by minions, as well as some increased minion damage. You may be tempted to spend more points in here, but you can actually get more damage in other places. So really just that potion healing is the most important bit of this. Beastmaster, keep in mind I am level 100. So you see five points in Druid and five points in Shaman. You can do those last. We're gonna focus on Beastmaster as soon as we're able to basically. 
Ursine Strength gives us a lot of strength and less damage taken from nearby enemies. That's that survivability we're talking about. Along the top here with Boar Heart and Porcine Constitution, those are going to keep us alive. So definitely sink a bunch of points into those. Along the bottom, you can see a few points spent. Nothing crazy to point out there. But Axe and Claw, you should max out as well for, of course, the most damage that you can get. And I do want to point out the very important one point in Life in the Wilderness, which says your endurance also applies to companions which is incredibly important for keeping all of your squirrels alive and making them very tanky in the late game keep in mind my character is level 100 i'm able to clear corruption level 300 and arena tier 4 with a fresh 100 and solo self found gear haven't really done much grinding for gear so all of these skills and passives have been getting me to that point cry of the lynx and the follow-up there just tons of damage you want the 10 points in Viper Fangs, of course, for the increased companion melee attack speed and your own. And Ancient Might finishes up with strength and lots of damage. When it comes to the Shaman and Druid points at the end, Shaman is basically 5 points for damage if you feel you need that more. Or 5 points in Endurance and Armor if you feel you need that more. I personally went Endurance and Armor before I went the extra damage, but up to you. For your gear, I want to remind everyone that my build has more involvement with me actually swiping all the time, and I don't have the most minion damage possible yet. I have not done any grinding really for gear since hitting 100, and this is a solo self-found character that is offline. So of course, the most important thing you're going to need is the Herald of the Scurry helmet. It is a unique world drop. You can target it in the Black Sun monolith because it has more unique helm nodes, but also you can go with prophecies or runes to try to get this helm faster. I personally did not get it until level 88. Woven Flesh is just personal choice. It dropped from the Abomination boss in the very first monolith. So uh, that and the Ribbons of Blood both drop off the Abomination. The Ribbons of Blood are actually quite important. And you can see I actually got a pretty lucky hit on fusions there with increased minion damage and increased health regeneration. But the important thing here is your minions cannot be crit along with all of those other awesome stats. So the important things here are the Squirrel Hat, the Ribbons of Blood, and finally Julra's Obsession, which says stats on this item also apply to your minions. So of course, the best thing you can actually slap on here is increased melee attack speed. I've only got 12% out of the 15% I could add, but um, obviously whatever you want your squirrels to have, you slap on these gloves. Some other items that I have are Font of the Erased, just happened to be a ring that gave me a lot of endurance, and I like to try to stay around the endurance cap. Right now I'm 9% over, so I could switch some things out. This Primalist Bloodcatcher of Life I just happened to find with 4 swipe, plus 4 swipe and 97% increased melee damage, good health and endurance on it as well after some forging. The belt, 46% increased armor is really kind of the big reason here. There are some more um, offensive and defensive things that came along with this. This was a Weaver's Will item, so I do get um, some potion slots there. And uh, the weapon and um, your sword and shield combo are actually interchangeable here. I just want to remind everyone, I like to jump in and swing. I really enjoy that. So Apathy's Maw Two-Handed Axe is what I've chosen to go with. This drops from the Shade of Orobis boss, along with this ring that I've got in my bag here, Siphon of Anguish. And Siphon of Anguish has the applying of doom, leech rate, lots of leech to keep yourself alive. I slap some minion damage on it as well. So basically when itemizing, I'm looking for plus minion damage first. If I can't get that immediately, then I'm trying to make my swipes as strong as possible. So Apathy's Maw basically does that the best for me. It's just a ton of extra damage and the chance to shred armor on hit is much appreciated. So Again, that's two pieces from the Abomination, Woven Flesh and Ribbons of Blood, and two pieces from Shade of Oribus, Apathy's Maw, and Siphon of Anguish. If you don't want to use the Font of the Erased, which is, you know, here, here nor there, I could use this or not. The boots that I have are really just a ton of armor. You can see if I take them off, that's 900 armor-ish <laughs> just on these boots, which is pretty ridiculous. And then finally, the necklace that I have is just a ton of resistance, physical resistance and necrotic, just base on it. And then 34% elemental resistance across the board, lots of healing and regeneration on it. And finally, we have the idols, which are mostly increased health. You'll see percent increased health on these. 
uh, healing effectiveness, lots of fizz resistance. Again, I try to keep that capped and I'm right at 75% with the help of these idols. A couple of damage ones that I like are increased melee damage and minion melee damage, as well as uh, this one here. And these are, of course, primalist idols that you can keep an eye out for. The last one I've got here is just increased minion melee attack speed. But uh, all of this could get better, of course, with farming. You're looking for more legendary potential, more rolls on things like Jolra's Obsession, B Ribbons of Blood, and, of course, the Herald of the Scurry Helm. I've only found, like, three or four helms, and I think only this one had legendary potential on it. So it could be quite a lot of time before you're able to find a perfect set of gear here. But this has gotten me to, again, level 100, Corruption 300, and Arena Tier 4. So I hope that you will... Enjoy playing the Squirrel Beastmaster and enjoy using all of these skills and passives as I've laid out for you. Here is an example of a 300 corruption monolith echo where you can see the incredible speed and damage of the squirrels and the Beastmaster himself using the totems and leap to get around quickly. In the description of this video is the arena tier 4 that I cleared as soon as I hit level 100, as well as hours of live stream VODs leveling this character from level 40 all the way to 100, so check it out. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this guide useful and I hope that you'll join us for live streams every night 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific here on youtube.com slash askjoshi.